fuck yeah. That's more like it. I am here to talk to you about the saddest day of my life. I know that's unusual for me. I know none of you were expecting that. But I'm here to talk to you about the saddest day of my life, which happened a few weeks ago when I picked up the New York Times and read of the closing of Lomans. <laughs> you cannot fucking close Lomans. It is a New York fucking tradition. You cannot close. Are you with me on this? You you can't, you may not close Lomans. I love Lomans. I love Lomans. You do? Who said I love it? Yes, I love Lomans. And not just because you get great, great designer clothes at discount prices. No. I love Lomans. Why? Because of the dressing room. I hear the New York women laughing. Let me explain to the New York men. Lomans dressing room comprised of two areas. The first area are six private dressing rooms in the back. You take your clothes, you go into a little dressing room, you close the door, you try on your clothes, right? But this is fucking New York. Women in New York, we do not have time to wait, do we? No. So if those damn dressing rooms are packed, what do we do? We have a public dressing room in the front. 20 foot by 20 foot, full of mirror, mirrors, where every woman who does not want to wait, in other words, every woman in New York, will stand and strip down to various states of dress and undress right in front of you. I love low men's. <laughs> Some people think Disneyland is the happiest place on earth. I think it's the public dressing room at Lowman's. In fact, I was just there a little bit ago, just a little bit ago with my girlfriend. Not as excited as I usually am to be at Lowman's. Oh no, 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 because I am a New Yorker. In other words, it was a Sunday morning. So what did I do on Saturday night as a New Yorker? I didn't go to sleep, did I? I didn't go to sleep. Never went to sleep. Just stayed out all night, crept in in the morning on Sunday morning, laid down next to the girlfriend, thought, made it, she didn't notice. I was out all night. Two hours later, she wakes me up to take her to Lomans. I got out of bed, I put on my clothes because, you know, I want to stay with the girlfriend. And I went to Lomans. She loaded me up with clothes through the store. I had like four coats on this sleeve and I had like five dresses over here. I had hats on my head. I had bags in my teeth and we went to the Lomans dressing room and I ensconced her in the last private dressing room and then tired little me went to a chair in the public dressing room and sat down behind my son. Didn't even care. Didn't care about the naked women. Didn't care. Sat down, my sunglasses on, pushed my hat over my eyes, laid back, rest. And that's when I heard the voice in the German accent. Why is there a man in here? <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Why is there a man in here? And let me tell you how tired I was. I went, really? There's a man in here? Boy, he's going to get it. <laughs> now, kids, I've been a butch dyke my whole fucking life. I've been a butch dyke since I pop out of the womb. So my entire life, every day, somebody calls me sir. The worst was in the gynecologist's office. It's like, Wow, if that's too much for you, leave now. <laughs> Everybody knows about the time that I was on the airplane and a fucking flight attendant, a flight attendant, who is gayer than a flight attendant, comes up to me, looks at me and says, what do you have, young man? I said, a vagina. <laughs> I have a vagina. Vagina. <laughs> So every day of my life, somebody calls me, sir, I deal with it. It happened just here, just here, here at the TEDx Broadway. I came out of that bathroom. Are you here? Where are you, lady? I know you're in there somewhere. As a woman walked in, as she was walking in, I was walking out. She looked at me, walked past the door and up to the usher behind me and said, excuse me, where's the women's room? So 
Every day of my life, somebody calls me, sir, that thing happens, and I know how to deal with it. I deal with it with a sense of humor, or sometimes just kind of nicely, you know, just know you're mistaken nicely. And I was tired that day, I was so tired, so I decided to be nice to this woman who thought I was a man. And I said to her, I'm very sorry, but you're mistaken, I'm not a man. Usually, that's enough. Usually the person who has called me sir has a modicum of self-awareness. That person might be a little mm, embarrassed, having mistaken me for a gender that I am not. That person might be, oh, even a little horrified about it. But it, generally they will apologize or something. But not Miss Lufthansa. <laughs> well, you look like a man. You're wearing a cap like a man. You have tattoos like a man. And I said, yeah, well, you ought to know a lot about tattoos. <laughs> oh, yes, I fucking did. <laughs> I fucking went there. And let me tell you something, Lomans was filled with Jewish women who all gave me a standing fucking ovation. <laughs> So then I sang a medley of Fiddler. <laughs> and they were brilliant. Let me tell you how brilliant they were. They came at her. I didn't have to say a word. They were like, you can't talk to her like that. How dare you come to New York City and talk to one of our people like that? We don't need tourists like you. You just go back to Israel or wherever it is you're supposed to be, but you're not supposed to be here in New York City. And they ran her the fuck out of that dressing room. Right, I didn't have to say, I was like a little girl. I didn't have to say a word. They took care of me so beautifully. Thank God for those women, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were kind of settling down, you know. And the, work, the person who was working at Loman came over and apologized, she was lovely. And she went on her little way. And I sat back down thinking, wow. And just about at that time, another woman walks in, an employee of Loman's, takes one look at me and says, sir, you can't be in here. This is the woman's dressing room. And the first employee looks at her and goes, ah, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> that is a woman. Now this employee behaves the way people generally behave. Horrified, mortified, couldn't believe that she called me sir. She was just, she couldn't even believe it. She went on and on and on and on until finally I took pity on her. And I said, darling, there's no need for you to apologize. Not at all. <laughs> Obviously, it's a look I'm going for. <laughs> One, two, two, two. Let's see if I can get through this. <laughs> I'm a girl, and by me, that's only great. I am proud that my silhouette is curvy, that I walk with a sweet and girlish gait with my hips kind of swivelly and swervy. I enjoy being dressed in something frilly when my date comes to get me at my place. There I go with my George on a filly, like a filly that is ready for the race. When I get a brand new hairdo and my eyelashes all are curled, I float like the clouds on air. Fella sends me flowers. I drool over dresses made of lace. I sit on the telephone for hours with a pound and a half of cream upon my face. Simply, really, that's all I got, really. My future, I hope, will be at the home of a brave and free male who'll enjoy being a 